All right, gang. What can you say about Mega Man 2? Well, for starters, it's Mega Man 2. It's the game that followed Mega Man 1 and preceded Mega Man 3. That's what makes it Mega Man 2. In fact, of all the Mega Man 2s I've ever Mega Man 2'd in my life, this is definitely one of them. Because it's Mega Man 2. It's the game that started the franchise. I'll never get tired of saying that joke, even though in the grand scheme of things it's my 8th favorite of the 11 numbered classic series titles. Look, I can't help that, it's still a good game. And that's why it's Mega Man 2 and it's coming up next. Hit the music! Uh, well, the menu being read is actually kind of appropriate, because uh, this Mega Man 2 replay runs run, well, uh, it had yours truly seen read in a few spots. One of them is actually an Airman stage, which I wasn't always picking first when I was recording this. We'll get to that more later, but for now let's cross this opening stretch of Tiki's, and also note that some of these little guys are just gonna not come out of the ears of the thing and just pop straight up, at least the ones on the left side. I don't understand that. But it's still not a big deal. You can take him out, you can keep moving on, and that part isn't anything different than what you're used to facing. Neither are the Lightning Lord Cloud Rides, which we are definitely going to take it easy on, because I needed to chill after a couple of these <laughs> mistakes that uh, ruined some runs and sent us back to the beginning. Oh yeah, gotta dance to the music. This is one of my favorite songs. It's not my favorite of the eight, but it's darn good. Honestly, Mega Man 2 has a really great soundtrack. People would say it's overrated. Ah, I just don't see it. It's fun music. What's not fun are the Pippi Birds, because, yeah, it's tougher to get your shots in on them. Also, there's one other thing about those birds that kind of gets under my skin a little bit, and that's that they won't always despawn when they're supposed to. We're gonna see that a little bit later near the end. No, that's not the part that made me a little annoyed with the stage. It's actually this jump coming up here, from the first Tiki to the second in the uh, second half of the stage. Because for whatever reason, maybe it was Mega's sprite, maybe it was thinking the horns were timed differently when they certainly weren't. We would keep coming up short on that jump over and over and fall right into the pit. And like I said, the stage wasn't always done first, so uh, that was quite a few minutes lost in some cases. Now, the fan fiends here are uh, not going to despawn on you with the camera, so make sure you take them out. Pippy birds, and the reason why they're kind of annoying, like I said, is they don't always despawn when they're supposed to. In this case, they're going to be flying all the way at us up until we reach the boss shutter. So you got to keep going, or you're going to get popped by them. And we kind of want to make it to the boss shutter with as much health as we can, because, as you remember, Airman's tornado tosses are tougher to get by. And with Mega's larger sprite, they're now a little tougher. So you have two choices here. You can either try to dodge them, be an expert, or you can just face tank them, go in and get your hits. At this point of the run, we are definitely going to be doing option two because, uh, yeah, we're tired of that. I mean, after all, you're going to see one very great dodge coming up right there. Perfect. I knew we could get around one of them. And thankfully, getting around that one is the reason we're going to get through this stage without making another huge error. See ya. Well, it wasn't pretty, but we got it done. And with it, we get Air Shooter. Pretty good weapon. You do have to watch out, though, because now, uh, again, bosses having that extra invincibility time means a certain one isn't going to be hit multiple times per pass. That might throw you off, but let's face it, the real reason we beat Airman first was to get item 2. It's great, lets us fly through stages, lets us get items that we probably wouldn't get otherwise. It's just gonna make life easier, and I'm all for that at this point. And with that, we've got ourselves the save screen. Not gonna show the Mega Man 2 bots this time, I'm pretty sure we do eventually. But yeah, now's the time to take on Metal Man. 
I thought about taking Metal Man on first and did a couple times. Quick Man was the one I really wanted to take on first, but that's asking for trouble in this run, so we'll, we'll just steer clear of him for now and take on the gear instead. Besides, Metal Man's a perfect opening stage. You get a free E-Tank right off the bat. You might as well take it. And you might as well not press the issue here, because just take your time. This opening bit's meant to be, you know, slow it down a bit. You don't always have to rush. After all, he's in Mega Man 3, not 2. Of course, right after the presses are a certain enemy type that even I can't stand waiting on too long. So, yeah, let, let's just see these guys. Here are the moles. I can't stand them. Never have. I've said it before and I'll say it again. As much as I joke about Joe, I cannot stand the moles. They just take way too long in every game they're in, pretty much. So we're just going to take the hits and we're just going to move on. They also go a little bit longer than they would in the NES game. Just a little, though. It's not that noticeable. But yeah, here's a chance for item 2. Granted, it could have also been a chance for item 1, but that's okay. Get ourselves an extra life that we're definitely not going to use, because, uh, again, gotta do this all in one life. Just those little challenges that make things interesting. And the other thing that's uh, a little interesting about this run was just, at times I was just playing around with weapons, seeing if anything would work differently, like maybe the air shooter would take care of the pie robot. No, not there. Honestly, I recommend taking out the gears first because they're kind of annoying in this game. And again, once you take care of the pyrobot, it's like you're still going to have to shoot the gear anyway. It doesn't work the uh, other way. Get rid of the gear, robot's gone. Because if you don't, this is going to happen. Ow. And ow again. Good job, me. Not exactly the smoothest run so far, but again, it's bound to happen. As much as I like Mega Man 2 in spots, I also really struggle with this one. Don't know why. Thankfully though, this little guy's gonna give us a nice little refill, and that's gonna guarantee an easy time with both the rest of the level and the boss, because, well, we're gonna item two our way through this. Up, over, and gone. Also, you're not supposed to be there, number three. What are you doing? Anyway, no weakness weapon here, but, like, you're gonna need it. It's Metal Man. Now, the thing about Metal Man that has changed, however, is he does have this one triple toss that's very odd in how you dodge it. Once he goes up to show it off, you kind of want to either jump through the first and second, or really just run under the second Metal Blade toss. Either way, you're gonna be fine. I mean, you could also jump into it if you feel inclined, but I don't want to take any more damage. We already had one iffy boss fight. We don't need to be having a ton, although he's still going to get us a few times here. It was bound to happen. What I'm really doing in this fight when I'm watching the uh, Metal Blades come out is that's what I'm focused on, I'm where Mega's at. Then I can just see how high Metal Man jumps and then make the appropriate corrections and where I need to be. Well, where I need to be, where Mega needs to be. I'm not the one fighting this guy. Otherwise, I'd probably take, you know, maybe two less hits. Just saying. Okay. That's enough joking around. We need to really wake up and start playing better here. Just a little better, though. You don't have to be that crazy. I mean, what's next? Well, what's next is we got Metal Blade. And, believe it or not, it's still Metal Blade. It's great. Although it does have one flaw in this game now. And that's that when you toss it, you kind of stick to the ground a bit, at least if you're grounded when you're shooting it. So that extra frame or two where you're just stuck can throw you off a little bit. But we're going to take it into a stage where it's not going to matter too much, because Flashman's floor is a little on the slick side. We're not going to be stuck very long. Another nice song right here in Flashman's stage. This is another one that gets the old uh, blood pumping a little bit. Honestly, it's a song so nice that Sonic 06 even decided to rip it off. I mean, granted, I don't think Mega Man 2 has much to say since this song's kind of paying homage to Metallica's Seek and Destroy in a couple spots, but... No, it's fine. Anywho, Crazy Cannons, you gotta go. We got Metal Blade, you gotta get going. Thankfully, that one is always looking the wrong way. I always like that. Thank you so much. What I don't like about this stage... ...are you. 
Wait a minute, I was in the air. You were not supposed to do that. Oh, man. Now, at first you might be saying to yourself, Bean, did you just let a Sniper Joe hit you? And to that I have to respond, No. The stupid mech that Joe's piloting hit me. Joe had nothing to do with it. It could have been you shooting at me for all I know, okay? It, look, sacrifices had to be made. I got hit. It's fine. It's not Joe that hit me. I'm not starting over. If he was out of the mech and he hit me, then sure, I'd let I'd just start the run over. Because again, we will never allow ourselves to be hit by a sniper Joe. But a Joe that cheats in its sniper armor mech and does that stuff? Uh-uh. We're gonna keep going. Like I said, that invincibility time kind of also messes you up there. But yeah, I don't like the fact that uh, those sniper armors can shoot even when you're in midair now. That's that's uh, cheating. Speaking of uh, guys that cheat in midair, here comes Flashman because... The idea is he's supposed to jump when you hit him. Instead, now he jumps when you shoot, so he's kind of more like Gemini Man in how you fight him. Tosses are a little off, but it doesn't matter. We've got plenty of health. And uh, again, don't try to lure him into the corner and try to send him straight up with metal blades like we did in the NES version. That doesn't work. Oh, well. If ever there was a name of a weapon that you would get wrong in this game, and maybe even the entire classic series, it'd be Time Stopper. Because you think it'd be called Flash Stopper. But no, they used that for Mega Man 4? Right, man? Huh. We also get the item that Time Stopper forgot in item 3. I mean, it's good, it lets you get up a few walls in this game, and you're gonna need it. It's just not as good as 1 and 2. And let's face it, you were really here to get Time Stopper, because... Guess who we're facing next? But before we get to that, I actually had an interruption which caused me to pause the video, so if you hear a weird little audio issue here, that would be that. I'm always gonna point those out. That said, when I came back to the recording unpausing it, this was the run that got us through to the end, at least to the 8, which is nice, because I was getting tired of redoing this stage. Oh, quick man, you were a pain in this game. More on that when we get to them, because uh, even the stage itself is a pain. Let's face it, the one-hit KO lasers, which I'm gonna say right now, always been a bad gimmick. Kinda like this block pattern here, giving us the finger. That's what this stage does to you. Hope you know the uh, pattern of these lasers so you can just perfectly maneuver around them. Yeah, that's that's level design. Love it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a chill pill, even though we're about to face some hotheads here. Air Shooter takes them down in one hit, but we want to save Air Shooter for later. Not just for the Joes, but for someone after that. Again, guess who? Honestly, I do uh, like how this stage is going for the most part. I also try and would say to not use Time Stopper for the lasers if you can avoid it here. Again, you kind of need all the ammo you want for later on in the level. I know it's a risk, and if you can, then cool. But then again, you guys and uh, gals are going to be using E-Tanks if you want. Oh man, that was a close laser there. Yikes. Thankfully, we're almost through this, so we can go and face our good old buddy Sniper Joe. And this time, we are going to hit him out of the mech, and now we are going to fly past him. Because again, if Joe hits us when he's out of the mech, that's the end of the run. I, I refuse to be hit by one of those things. Just no. No, no, no. Ooh. Don't you even think about jumping on me, pal. We got a gate to get to, get going. Now, the issue with Quick Man here is the same one that was a problem with Cut Man in Mega Man 1's replay run. He doesn't take double damage from the Buster anymore. He only takes one. That kind of means we're basically facing a Doc Robot version of him here. I do not want to do that. No, not at all. So what we're going to do here after Time Stopper wears off is use Air Shooter because that does hit him for a couple bars of health for every shot. Like, I'm not worried about the boomerangs, I'm certainly not worried about him running into us. Thankfully we're getting just about every one of those hits, left him with one bar left, and bye. I think that was the first time we got past him, I don't remember now. Again, 16, 17 months since playing this game, and it was, uh, it was an adventure. The real thing that annoys me is that Quick Boomerang's really good, but you're never going to use it if you get Metal Blade first, because it's just so much better. 
But yeah, Quick Boomerang has so much ammo. It's really good. Ah, man. This game. Well, you know what? We're just gonna cool off after that one, because now we are getting to the stage that has my favorite song in the game, NES or Genesis. Oh, that's so good. I love this one. Also like the look of the stage. Hopefully the uh, waterfall doesn't cause the same issue in the NES version where the frame rate goes crazy. I don't think it will. Gonna keep a little guy around and hop over so we can make sure those frogs aren't shooting at us all the time. Honestly, that worked out perfectly. Usually you hop into a pit. Let's make sure we don't hop into a pit and just get off those Tetris blocks just fine and dandy. Well, you know, look. Not everything's gonna go smoothly here. It's just the way it is. That's, that's how I've uh, prepared this run to go. Now we got the uh, physics to the water back that we're used to. Again, not just uh, going on and off like Mega Man 1's did. Also, we get the uh, boss here. Well, mini boss here. It's a little different than it was in Mega Man 2 because it does not take that many hits to take down, and I am fine with that. It's kind of like it's playing by Mega Man 2 normal difficulty rules. Even though the game itself has no difficulty uh, levels like that. Normally, it'd take a little more. Whatever. Anyway, we are not going to run right off those platforms, because I don't know if we can crash into the spikes that way. Don't even want to think about testing it. Again, another big fish, and it's gone in three shots. Okay, sure. I'll take that. What I won't take are these darn frogs getting in our way. So if you'll excuse me, big guy. Also, I love how that first one goes flying off the screen. Don't know why we took that one down, but we did. Sure, we're gonna get hit because of it, but it doesn't matter. We're already near the end of the stage. Which is kind of a shame, because again, this song's great. Oh, speaking of Time Stopper, here's another great part to use it, because... You don't want those crabs just, you know, dropping down on you. And thankfully, we have plenty of Metal Blade, you know, surprise, surprise, to take on Bubble Man. I'd say I hate to burst your bubble, but no. Anyway, this guy is pretty easy, but he will keep shooting whether he's on the ground or not, or whether you're level with him or not. It's like, he does more uh, shots with his harpoon gun. It's like, whatever. Bubbles come out normally. Although that kind of stops his uh, harpoon shots, and I don't get why. Whatever. You're gone. Not much to say about you. Love your song. Love the fact that you're so simple. See you later. Actually, when I said Time Stopper was the name that people might get wrong the most, I kind of forgot about Bubble Lead, not Lead, because it leads the way and takes care of all things on the ground, including showing you where fake floors are. But that's not for part one. That, that's part two. Going right to Heat Man now, because, well, water usually puts out fire. And that's the case here. Well, I said Quick Boomerang doesn't get its fair shake, but you know what? We are going to give it one here, because, again, it's a really good weapon, and we should be using it. Yes, Metal Blade would take these prop tops out faster. It's... I, it doesn't matter. We're going to give Quick Boomerang a shot. What it does do well is take care of the tellies in one shot, and gives us that overhead deal, where we don't have to even worry about aiming with our shots. It can just do the job for us. We're going to take it a little casually here, but not too casually. I'm not too worried about landing in the lava so much as I am, uh, just maybe missing a jump. It just seems to be the theme of this, uh, whole run. Thankfully, the Quick Boomerang can also take care of those little spine enemies for us, including this one that we probably would have landed on had that boomerang not have hit him from underneath. And instead of worrying about the blocks here, we're also going to use item 3. Again, if you have the tools to get through this faster, why not use them? We're not doing a buster-only run. That's not what we do here. We just have ourselves some fun. And this part with the disappearing blocks and the pillars is going to be a lot of fun because the timing feels a little bit off to me here again. Whether that's the case or not, I don't know. It just feels that way, and that perception can, you know, lead to the reality, which is going to be a lot of jumps that are missed. Yeah. Excuse me, I was trying to take care of you there, Telly, but no, nope, you just had to say no. Okay. We'll try this a third time here. Getting a little bit annoyed, and it's fine. We made it through, but yeah. 
Angry hop, angry shoot. Okay, get that out of your system and then focus on this one. You can't screw up with this block or you're going into a pit. Once you have, you've pretty much dealt with all the blocks you need to in this level, thankfully. Well, unless you go for the extra life like we're going to here in just a bit. Because these ones go a little bit faster. It looks like they stay up longer too, which, you know. But because they come up faster, that means these ones down below are going to get in our way. And that was some good jumping because I did not want to fall in that pit there. Also didn't really want to be hit by another, well, sniper armor, not Joe, because... But you know what? We didn't get hit by Sniper Joe or its armor there. What we did was establish dominance. Because it... Again, you know, I ran into it. It didn't run into us. I was not hit by a Sniper Joe, and I refuse to believe anybody like you would believe that. Come on, gang. You're smarter than that. If you really want to be smart, don't jump here in the opening with Heat Man, because now his triple atomic fire toss was over our head. So that means this is pretty much a free fight, and we are going to take it for all it's worth cool them off in five shots, and move on to our final couple of Robot Masters. That works for me. Again, I say that I always thought Heat Man was an oven because of the whole brick oven background deal, but, uh, he he's not that. No. Atomic Fire's good, you charge it up, you get two big, fully-powered blasts from it. Because you only get those two big, fully-powered blasts, you're not going to use it that much especially in comparison to item 1, which is another great item. Always like having those little platforms to help us out get through some stages. Don't remember if we're going to see it too much in part 1, I don't think so. Well, actually, no, we might actually see it there. Never mind, never mind. I, I was thinking of our next guy, not the one we're facing last. And yeah, time to take on the big sap himself. Woodman, who thinks he's Tarzan, even though he's cosplaying in a tree stump costume. Weirdo. Alright, alright, I'll admit it. As silly as Woodman looks, he's got one banger of a song. It's a good one. This game has a ton of those. Anyway, once again, we're gonna ignore the bats here, take down the bunnies with our quick boomerang, and just keep on going. Because that just seems to be the little theme here. Metal Blade is going to get used quite a bit, both in this stage and in Part 2, but I wanted to give other weapons a time to shine, because let's face it, once you get Metal Blade, the game pretty much feels like it's, well, halfway over already. And, again, it's great on the hot dogs too, but let's face it, once you've taken care of one of them, you've taken care of them all. So let's just use Time Stopper and make that a reality. Because again, just like the NES version, you use Time Stopper, they don't spawn in. And that's pretty nice. We can go straight to the second half of the stage. Probably could have gone up this ladder before uh, those bats started moving, but I wasn't going to risk it. I don't know why I'd say risk it, but eh. And again, you're going to want Metal Blade anyway for these monkeys. I do like jumping with it because, again, there's that little frame stickiness where you just can't do anything when you're on the ground. And I kind of want to be moving in case that guy hops up and uh, becomes a problem. Most of them don't, but you never know. It can always happen. Like right there, see? Had I tried to stay there and fight that thing, Mega would have got hit at least once. Don't need to look silly. We've already done that plenty in this video, after all. Not really sure why we switched back to Quick Boomerang here. Probably, again, for the same reason I said of letting other weapons show off. But let's face it, Metal Blade's so much better for this part, because uh, you got the whole staircase deal. You can just take it down so much easier. It, it just works. We're at the end of the stage, so it's time to item two on past and get ourselves to the goal. So let's go. I don't mind walking anyway. Watch out for the Atomic Chickens. That's a great name. I think they're also called Cooks. Uh, watch out for the cook kicks. They kind of hurt. Yeah. Anywho, uh, there's uh, one other thing to point out here. You notice how some bosses have been, well, taller than they used to be? Well, in Woodman's case, that actually affects the size of his shield. Now it's basically like fighting his Doc Robot version of him. This jump is really tight, and it's kind of a pain to get over. The leaves are annoying to dodge, too, but y yikes, that is annoying. Get out of here, you sap. Burn to the ground.
Well, if you're gonna cheat using a shield, so are we. Leaf shield is great. As long as you don't move, because then you toss it. Good thing there are a lot of parts with some conveyors in our next stage, and in a fortress where we can just stay still and let the leaf shield do the work for us. Last, but not least, is Crash Man. I always like this stage. Maybe it's just a whole climb to the top. Telly's gonna show up right away, so take care of them, and then you can get moving on up. Good idea, that. Because otherwise, you're not gonna get to the boss, I'm, ju I'm just saying. The Mets are still fast with their shots, so you need to be faster and plan out when they're gonna shoot. Actually, I guess their shots feel like they come out slower, don't they? But the Mets are still fast, so you gotta be careful there. In fact, they're so fast that they don't act the way they used to on the NES game. And now, here's our chance to use item 1. Could have been done a little bit better, but again, you know, we're still getting the hang of this. I don't even think we had done Crash Man stage until this point. Nope. Don't need to climb up these maze-like sections. Nope, nope, nope. Just gonna hop on over with our item. Not do so much battle. Nice little victory hop, Mega. We did it. I always gotta save those one or two seconds by hopping off that ladder and then jumping right back up. But again, watch this Met here and how quick he is. He is just gonna fly right on by. Honestly, what we should be doing is seeing that he's underneath us and... Yeah, there you go. Metal Blade takes care of it in no time flat. Once again, though, you get to see Time Stopper in action. Well, you will once we... Once we do this once, because again, let's just show how good Leaf Shield is. I always like this weapon. Even though it's cheating. But now that we're up here and we see that bird on the left side, it's time to freeze the screen and make the rest of this climb to the top a pretty easy one. I'm all for that. Again, you can get yourself another E-Tank if you want. We're at full, and again, we aren't going to be using them, so what's the point? Same with the one up. Don't need it. Let the prop tops drop on in, and you can take care of them. I was expecting one there, but it didn't show up. Pretty sure it does on the NES version. Maybe I'm imagining things. I'm also imagining that uh, we are through this stage so far without getting hit. That's pretty good. Let's see if we can finish it off. All we gotta do is shoot air shooter at him and... We'll get our no-hit clear in the second part of this run. Yeah. Crash Bomber, which is Crash Bomb? Crash Bombs? Whatever you want to call it. It's still just seven shots. All oh, this weapon would be so much better if you had ten. It really would. I like it. It's fine. And now at this point, I'm wondering to myself, do I go to the next part? Because in the original game, it goes straight to the Wily Fortress uh, screen in the opening. We kind of got to stop the video, because this is the end of part one. We're going to take the chance, though. We're going to save it. We're going to come back. Are they going to make us go right ahead? Because if so, this video is ending really quickly. No. You go right back to the menu screen. Thanks, game. And with that, eight down, eight more to go because we have to do the refights. There's also a doctor there too who we already beat down in the first game. Oh, this is just getting ridiculous. Well, I'll see you next time for Mega Man 2 Part 2 and Mega Man The Wily Wars Replay Runs. That name just continues to flow right off the tongue.